Hello, it's Father Norm Douglas again. I'm actually recording this on uh, July 2nd. Tomorrow is the government holiday, July 3rd, but obviously July 4th, our Independence Day, is a day that uh, we especially remember who we are as a country, who we've been, and who we hope yet to become. Now, we can reflect right now on this day upon what does it mean to be free? As I was growing up, and I probably told you this before, I had my mom as a single parent, and I got my own car with my paper route money. I made good grades. Uh, I, I was able to uh, you know, drive the car safely and all that. And I figured at the age of 17, I should be able to go out with my car anytime I want and do whatever I want. My mom said, no way. She was concerned about being, me being out late at night. And she also mentioned that she worried when I was out late and, couldn't, and she couldn't get to sleep. Uh, sad to say, at that time, boy, this is a confession, I admit. I said to her, hey, if you're worried about me, that's not my fault. You have to deal with that yourself. I guess I was asserting my independence in a rather self-centered way as a teenager, wanting to do all that I wanted to do with my life. And when we look at that, I remember within a couple of years, thankfully, I came back to my mom and apologized. I recognized how selfish I had been, how insensitive I had been to this woman who cared so much for me, raised me as a single parent and did that. Probably a lot of us have teenage stories like that or stories even now where maybe uh, we're not as uh, grateful for people in our lives. Uh, or we get in more arguments with them rather than trying to understand what they're saying to us, especially out of their concern. You know, I realized that later on that I had a blind spot. We can all have them because I thought I was justified at that time in telling my mom it was her issue. But again, thankfully, I got beyond that. And I remember hearing from a Catholic priest a number of years ago who challenged me with this statement. He said to me, your life is not all about you. That's what it means to be human. That's certainly the Christian message. Your life is not all about you. Oh boy, I've remembered that. I haven't always lived it, but I've certainly remembered it. And think about this. Even when Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, he began saying this. We, we, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, today we'd say hopefully all people, are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's put in terms of we, not me, not I. And when we look at that, we see that back then, only white male property owners actually had the right to vote and had the full freedom. We know since then, we have been trying to uh, come to a sense of, uh, uh, of how we live this out better year by year. And right now, we're dealing with the whole issue of race. We've dealt with other issues too. And, and looking at that and seeing how do we struggle to best live that ideal that all are created equal. We also have another way to look at this whole issue of independence and dependence at the horrible pandemic we're going through. Again, we've mentioned before that we believe that God didn't create this, but God can work through human circumstances and help us to see and give us greater wisdom. Maybe July 4th should be called our Declaration of Interdependence, not only as a nation, but as a global family. For each of us as individuals, families, communities, and nations, we were not created by our God to be separate and independent. We are discovering that what we do anywhere affects the human family everywhere. You know, too often we are used to think of being free almost as a teenager kind of way. You know, what I got caught up in, being able to do what I want, when I want, how I want. Uh, no one placing restrictions on me. Certainly, this comes out in the current issue about wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. 
I saw one young man on a newscast who said that he did not wear a mask and, uh, and he did get the virus. He was humbled by that. But even then, he didn't think it was any big ideal. He was young, he was healthy, he didn't seem to have any symptoms. However, uh, he was taken aback when his grandmother, who always stayed home, always in the house, being very cautious about not going out, that she actually got it from him. And she became very ill. Thankfully, she ended up recovering. But this turned this young man around because he wasn't just thinking in terms of the big I. He saw already his impact on another human being he loved. And even if the impact's on people we don't even know, and certainly maybe we don't even like, still the point. We all have a meant to care for one another. So he, this guy, this young adult, he, from personal experience, he got himself another perspective. He heard the message from our divine creator that your life is not all about you. Another fellow on a newscast said he was converted to wearing a mask for the safety of others and himself. He thought back to when he was very irate about the law to wear seatbelts. He should figure he had the right to make that determination. It's his own right. But within a couple of years, statistics showed that seatbelts saved about 15,000 people a year who would survive a wreck that they would not have. This grabbed his attention. It was a fact. It was a statistic. And, and so in so many ways, we all need to move away from an individualistic, it's only about me perspective to an act of concern for the common good. And if someone's not our color or does not agree with us in every issue, all the more we should be attentive to them, consciously asking questions to better understand their perspective, not first to win the argument or put them down. Another aspect of human freedom that I think we can reflect on here, uh, there was a woman a while back in another parish I was in, I'll call her Barb, that wasn't her name, but Barb, she resented her only sibling, her brother Mark, who lived out of state. And why? He came home rarely to visit their ailing mother. He had been, eventually uh, became a recovering alcoholic. And once Mark had found out that his mother only had a few months to live, he did come back to Akron, moved back here and spent much time with her. However, Barb was still very angry because she had been there all these years and he had just come back a few months and her mother embraced him. Her brother did admit to both of them he was a slave to alcohol. At the same time, he said, because a long time he didn't believe in any kind of God, he was going to make it on his own but he came to a sense of God through AA meetings. And then for him, a God coming out of his Christian perspective of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the spirit within. And he was able to admit he was powerless over alcohol and that his life had become unmanageable. And he then uh, recognized that he needed to turn to that higher power that would restore him to sanity and, and what he needed to do, and he did it make a decision to turn his all, all life over to the care of God. He apologized to his mom and Barb about how self-centered he had been and asked for their forgiveness. Barb at first balked at this, but then recognized and admitted her own blind spot that she found out where she was not free, where she had a kind of addiction, if you will. She was still hanging on to self-pity, resentment, hostility, self-righteous judgment. She learned about the 12 steps through her brother, and even though not an alcoholic, listening to him, she saw that maybe she needed to hear more about this and how she could get freed up from all those things that were weighing her down, and that she could let the Lord help her to get free and to humble her and then to overcome sinful pride. <clears throat> that sinful pride showed up in many ways in her life. Uh, that she, until she got over the blind spot, she saw she always wanted to be right, to win any argument, to be in control. Uh, she wanted to, uh, uh, she was not uh, sensitive to other people's hurts, and she couldn't admit her own vulnerability. These things came aware through her brother, who she always thought was not 
getting through to her, him and she was upset, but now she realized he had a gift of faith and love to give to her. She was humbled by that too. <clears throat> and she was able to be more freed up. Uh, and she realized that she had had this kind of mindset that if everybody was exactly like her, there would be no problems. Wow, when she went deeper into her life, what she did and how and why she did it, she found out there'd be many problems. Again, humbled. And getting all freed up from that, she actually, having a sense of, hey, I'm imperfect, I fall short, so does everybody else. You know, uh, God loves us and wants to help us to, to become our best, but even loves us when we're not there yet and loves us enough to challenge us to get better. That she found a greater sense of joy, fulfillment, and a deeper authentic faith. She had gone to church every week, but it was her brother and the steps he was telling her about that came that she came to a deeper real faith every week in church and every day in prayer of this Lord God who was real, who wanted to be the foundation of her life, and who would continually want to help her to see where she really needed to recognize the interdependency of her own family with her brother and of the whole human family and recognize that God wants to free us up, give us freedom from whatever keeps us from being the, the caring human being God intended to be us to be in the first place, especially for one another. Uh, and he's the one to help us to do that, not trying to do it on our own self-will. So reflection for this time. Thanks for listening. I'm sure I'll be back hopefully in another week to uh, have another reflection to pass on.